Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So it's Thursday, and Thursday means one thing. We've got an exciting update from the Space Engineers developers, and now you're probably wondering what you'll be getting your hands on this week. Well, in the idea of actual features, new features being added to the game, we've not got any this week, but we have got some quite impressive little updates for stability, as well as fixing some of the blocks that were recently added. Now, first of all, let's have a look at the projector block. You can see I'm projecting a warhead here, very similar to what the developers built, but the only difference is I've built it onto a ship that we're going to be taking out some targets with shortly. I've got some targets laid out there ahead. And what I'm going to actually do is fly over to them, launching these missiles as we go, just to see how it'll work. But apart from that, let's have a look at the new projector setting. So if I go onto this little control panel, and I find my projector. Projector, there it is. And then what I'm going to do is to show you this. So keep projection. So this basically, by ticking this box, allows it to keep projecting, even if that the block is destroyed, built, completed... It'll keep projecting it, and as soon as it's been built, it'll project the other one, keep projecting it to stop that little tactic where you have to constantly keep it on the grinders. You can basically turn these grinders off and they won't affect it, and you can constantly keep building the same design over and over again, like a real production facility, without having to do that little bug to stop the production. Anyway, let's fire a few of these missiles off, and I'll show you how it works. So we're going to activate this guy here, and we're going to press Start. So what's going to happen now is there's going to be a four second delay, then the welders will activate, like so. A really simple weapon system to build. The grinders then activate, cutting the blocks away. And why this is happening, this timer cube here activates that thruster, sending the missile away and out the tube. Now that's happened exactly again, so it's leading to me building these really powerful warheads and letting them leave the actual ship extremely fast. Now I'm rather interested to see how this will work when the ship's moving, but we'll test that shortly. There's a few more updates that I want to show you. Now if we turn this thing off before we go upstairs. So now that we're inside, we're going to head and have a look at the assemblers. The assemblers have been patched, and it's been a quite interesting patch for them. They've had a few features updated, as well as something that was really causing havoc in many of our survival worlds, and I'll show you just what that may be. Now if we go in here and we go to production, what you'll notice is that all of these items are red. And the problem was that it wouldn't display other items from other crates. So if I had these components, but they were in another crate, it would show them still red. But now, even if I do something like this, let me just make sure my assembler's not got anything to produce. That's fine. We'll go into here, and then what I'm gonna do is just offload a load of these parts into that connector, like so. And we're gonna go back to the control panel, and you'll see that these are now lit up. Even though them items are being stored in that connector, I can still visually see and produce these items. So let's produce a few computers. There we go, two computers going. Now, I've also set this up in quite an interesting way, something you might want to uh, sort of create your assembler base. Now, for other people, I'm not, I'm not saying anyone anyone's particular name, but in our survival world, people tend to drop things on the floor, causing massive dints. So if you stand here when you're collecting your items, if you do happen to drop anything, it is simply going to be collected by the connector below. You can see a little puff of smoke and it's going to be stored back within our system. So there's none of that didn't in a massive hole in the floor, so that's some, just a little idea I thought I'd show you as well. Now the final thing that was of considerable note was of vehicles and landing gears basically are now being stronger, being able to resist a lot of force. So what I've done here is I've got a little Henry landing bay at the back of my ship, and I'm just going to give this thing a whistle around, and we'll see if we can shake Henry off, or if he'll stay on engine bay down there shoot up the shaft into the cockpit and here we go now i've also got the weapons you can see at the front we're gonna have a launch of them at some of the targets once we do but for the moment i'm just gonna see if i can shake henry off on the back now i'm moving this thing around quite dangerously i'm not sure if that banging noise is some other part of the ship or just henry himself but he does seem to be sticking on there usually this sort of movement would shake that little ship off i'll give it a really hard sort of spin perhaps and we'll even go on the attack run with Henry attached on the back. But this is going to be really nice because it means you can transport your large ships around with your small ones on the back. So for this final test, I've got a number of deadly red ship targets over there. We've got Henry strapped to the back, so we'll see if them landing gears hold, as well as the missile system on the front using the projector. I really want to see how effective this missile system actually is because it might be worth testing out to see if it's worth implementing on a number of other ships. 
because it's quite a cheap way of making quite an explosive based weapon. So let's actually start this off with two aimed shots. So we're just going to aim these two shots from a static position. We're going to kick in with our welders first. So our welders should come on very shortly in about four seconds time after I press that button. So in about three, two, one. There we go. Welders are away. Second thing, grinders are kicking in and now we're actually aiming at the target. So hopefully this shot is going to go straight into the side and we'll get that first big bit of damage to go doing. So there goes the missile. We'll actually have to see if it actually hits into the target or it's going to be a total miss. So what I'm going to do is actually cut off this second round. And there it goes towards the target. It's going to hit the laser. And there we go. So we've got a second missile now that we're following in. And we're going to restart the machine when we get another target. So there goes the second missile. And we're going to be moving this time. So it should be another explosion. Quite a lot of damage from them warheads. Looks like it's a considerably quite a dangerous weapon to actually use. But let's see how accurate it's going to be on the move. So we've got another target out there in the distance. We can just start to see it emerging now. And just see the parts of it, a few different pieces. We'll go for this target on the left. I think there's one going to be emerging on the right as well. Uh, we'll bring our aim up ever so slightly, like so. I can hear Henry a little bit agitated back there, but hopefully that's not going to be a serious problem. Okay, and we design, we're actually firing this missile now. It's being built, it's being grinded away, but will we actually be able to fire it before we hit the target? That's the question. And we're going to hit the brakes. Oh, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. Oh god, that's close. That's cutting it close. Cutting it close. Okay, we just sent that ship into a devilish sort of spin. And by the look of it, we're launching another missile. So I'm just going to turn that thing off before we cause any more havoc. We'll let this missile launch away. And then we're going to actually turn around and try to deal with that. Okay, I've only got one reverse thruster on that side. We can actually turn around and start to engage it. It's just timing these missiles. That's what I think the major sort of dilemma is going to be with them. If you ever plan on using them on a ship. It's actually timing them and hitting it from long range. Because at this range, the laser's not even showing up from that rocket pod. So it's going to be extremely hard. So let's actually um, slow down a little bit. Hold 37 uh, and try to launch a few towards this target. So we'll hit three again. Get another one built up. Four second countdown. A little bit of a killer that second. Maybe we need it instant. We need an instant response from this actual weapons platform. Still aiming at it. That missile might go a little bit low. Or maybe it'll curve straight up into it. Yeah, missile's away. We're still going at 37 feet a second. Oh, yes, that looks good. That looks like a good shot. It's going to go straight into the back of it. Maybe a bit high. Okay, beautiful. All right, we've got a second shot going off. And I'm going to have to break off now. Turn this thing off. Okay, that's good. That's good. Hold the brakes. Hit the brakes. The thing is, if you're not sure about your weapon like this, you see how I'm not too sure exactly when I'm releasing these torpedoes, it means that... It just keeps producing them, and at such a rate that it can be such. I think it's actually going to grind off and launch another torpedo. No! Oh god! Yeah, this this torpedo design, it might work quite well from a static position, but I think this is the sort of thing you're going to get quite a lot. You're going to either blow, end up blowing your own ship, but or if you time it, or maybe even have a secondary gunner to actually time it correctly. And you might be able to get these missiles off quite effectively. I could see myself building some sort of large missile launcher with maybe multiples of these in that fire, like a volley. Like something like one of them, um, them MLRS systems, maybe just launch a whole volley of them at a target. That could work pretty well, and you could just have one volley of that. But anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. It was quite an interesting little number of fixes that they added to the game. And I'll see you next time.